yes guys we're here again um we're on adams valley farm in mayfield manchester right now i'm taking a walk through the strawberry farm strawberry So stay tuned. Watch what I'm going. Yes, guys, so I'm in one of the greenhouse now. And you know water always have to be on them to keep them cool So this is one of the greenhouses guys one of there are many greenhouses on this farm so an interview will be done on the owner of this property sh shortly guys so stay tuned and watch what's going on So guys, as, as you can see, there are many fruits over here. We have pineapple also. So take a look at the farm, guys. The farm is very big, huge. Okay guys, so here we are in another of a greenhouse. Some workers here cutting suckers to replant. So guys, I think this is one of the nursery that they use to cut suckers from to replant so here you see guys um, Water always have to be on the strawberries because they have to be grown in cool places. So here is some that they have reaped. There's a lovely one guys, it's very big, looks juicy.
So guys over here is very big, spacious. So guys, you can see the irrigation system is well set up and this is my first time on a strawberry farm, farm and it looks pretty nice, looks pretty decent, smells sweet, like you want to eat off everything. So guys, here I've seen something, I've noticed something that some of the, the rosem, they, they have um, painted the sticks in blue and yellow, so I'm not sure what's the cause for that, but probably they want to mark some, to use it to mark something. So Adams Valley Farm guys. There's a lot of farm stuff on this, a lot of fruits on this farm. So, but mostly strawberry though, mostly strawberry. See the birds are inside here, feeding as well, feeding themselves with strawberries. As you can see guys, the strawberries are well maintained, they are very pretty, big, nice. So here is, a, is another nursery that the cut sucker from to plant. Okay guys are here so water always have to be here and based on the time that it is set to water them daily so it's a lot of water guys use on the farm here so guys here we have another greenhouse with some melon in here Yes guys, so here is another greenhouse. We are just touring the farm guys. No man, I don't put it in there, that's why I just have to tell you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes guys, so we have quite a few greenhouses on the farm here. Alright guys, so here is one of the farmer reaping strawberries. So how do you know when they are ready? Okay, so what's your name? Shanique, okay. Nice to meet you, Shanique. Yes. 
This here is very nice. So I'm just taking a walk through this thing here. As you can see the birds, they want to feed as well. Morning. Morning. Have some big strawberries here, man. Yeah. What's the biggest strawberry I ever reap? What's a five pound? Okay. Okay. So guys, as you can see, it's a lot of land. Here is his irrigation system, the pump, the filter and everything. Yes guys, so here is one of the reservoir that he built to water his plants but as you can see I think some fish some red tilapia are inside there they are right There. So. It's really big guys. So he he get water from open source. And this is the dam that feeds the farm with water. Yes, guys, so these are some lettuce as well in another greenhouse on the farm. Yes, guys, so as you can see, they are preparing the bed to plant some suckers here. And these farmers over here are replanting. So, yes, guys, so that up there is some bees, April. Yes, guys, so this is the Adams Valley sign. Yes, guys, fresh pick strawberries. Yes, sir. So this is Mr. Murray here on the farm. He's the owner of the farm. Yes, sir. So tell me about the farm, Adams Valley. How, how did it get the name? Okay, so the, the, the farm is actually located in northwest Manchester on top of the Don Figaro mountain range. Yes. And of course, you know, in of Midstone era, we know that there's a, in terms of slavery and emancipation, actually, there is actually a, a museum 
by the primary school. Yes. Because in this area, it was one of the first places to, to, to have the emancipation of the slave. I, I, a matter of fact, it rivals Sligoville in yes. terms of being the first free village. Okay. And so what happened was the Moravians, who were actually the missionaries in this area, okay. coming from Bogue in St. Elizabeth, just up the hill to this area, they were the ones as missionaries here. So okay. they were the ones in charge of a part of the emancipation program. Okay. And so yeah, the name Adams Valley, as you can see, is come straight from the Bible. From oh, Adam and Eve, Adam so and hence Eve. the places are named, hence the school is even named Nazareth Moravian School, Jesus yeah. Christ of Nazareth. Yes. So the names up here tend to follow a, a biblical connotation okay. because of who were the first missionaries in this year, which were the Moravians. Okay, so how, 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 how um, do you go about um, processing or growing your, your crops? Okay, uh, the, one other thing you always think about first is, is crop selection. And of okay. course, that must always be attuned to, to, to location. Yes. And I chose this place because of the, the elevation, okay. which is roughly 2,600 feet above sea level. sea level. It is ideal for growing most crops that are planted in Jamaica, including high mountain coffee. Okay. So initially, when I came up here, I came up here to find a piece of land big enough to plant enough coffee yes. and at least at the right location 2600 feet above sea level yes. but not only is it ideal for, 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 for things like coffee it is ideal for greenhouse farming as well okay because the experts will tell you if you want to go into greenhouse business you must put the greenhouse at the right place yes and you should always try to put it at least 1500 feet above sea level yes hence when i came out of the coffee business why i gravitated to such things as greenhouse farming since the, the location was ideal and most crops can be grown successfully here. So how big is the farm, you say? So the, the, the entire property is roughly 70 acres. 70 acres. Yeah. And I do a mixed crop. I do even forestry trees. I have acres of pine trees. Yes, I see some pine I'd trees. I've gone right through my coffee and planted cedar trees, just that I haven't played a number on those. Yes. But I do, I even have like an acre of lychee plants up there as well now. Too. Lychee, okay. And well. I'm sourcing like long and to plant to plant the local strawberry because they are sweeter. Yes. And the shelf life is much longer. And of course, even cheaper than the imported one. Mm -hmm. But the imported one. Um, these, these things on the, the, I notice they are color coded. Yes. What are they mainly for? You have blue and you have yellow. Okay. So we have challenge, we have pest problem in the strawberry and other crops. So this is not really reinventing the wheel. This is something from age old. Yes. But I've come back to and gone back to now because it is much more effective yes. than using chemicals to kill the pests. Okay. In particular, the Western flower trip is a very evasive insect and so what it does is hide basically hide with any little shuffling of the leaves or anything like that yes it go and dodges away and so while the chemical has the potential to kill it yes but it has to make contact with the insect to kill it oh, okay and that is not happening. what i find that that now they are attracted to, to bright, bright colors yes. such as the blue the males are attracted in particular to the blue Oh. And to the yellow sticky trap. So what we do is put a sort of adhesive on these. Yes. And when the insect goes there, lands on it, they cannot come out. And so ultimately they die. So it's a very effective and safe way to keep deal with them. your pests. Yes. Yes. And of course, I'm much much better for the consumer as well too. They're talking about safer food to consume. Yes. You don't have to use these organic chemicals in there. So they think about organic. Farming basically. Okay. And you say, how long have you been in the farming industry? Well, I've been a farmer now for over 40 years, but in greenhouse farming now for, from since 2011. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and, yes, and, and I mean, I think 2014, 2015, their boat was selected national champion farmer two years in a row until oh. they changed the rules and say one farmer is not supposed to win more than two consecutive times. Really? So retired. Wow. Mm. Okay. And I got, even in that time, I got, I was champion farmer, champion greenhouse farmer, three times in a row. Oh. Mm. But I haven't really bothered to, 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 to enter again. You are the first strawberry farmer in And yes, by far. By okay. far. The first okay. commercially strawberry commercial farmer. strawberry farmer okay. in Jamaica. If you go to Rada or Minch Agriculture, I can tell about strawberries. I'm the person I'm sure they'll refer to.
Okay, okay. So even the couple of farmers that we have in the Blue Mountain doing strawberry, they came here to learn. Okay. Mm. Okay. All right, Mr. Moore. Mm. So, so where can they find you know the 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 marketers find you when they want to, you oh, know, okay. buy some when, of when these crafts? I supply and a label that a company run by my company called Vegeto Morris Vegetopia Limited. Yes. Right, and these are labeled products. So you'll find us in the supermarkets representing general food, grocery shop. Yeah. And recently now the progressive grocery. So we are taking on some of the, the stores of progressive grocery. Okay, okay. As well as we do supply to the hotels as well. Yes, yes. Half moon in particular, the chef here would want no other strawberry but our strawberry. Yes. And I and, and, and as I've walked through the strawberry farm I see some some very very nice pretty strawberries and they look very nice and healthy. So yeah, you know and, and and they look they look how how do you know basically when they are ready apart from when they are red? No man that, that, that's really you know. You you normally pick strawberries when they are three quarter ripe. Right? And okay. the and that you have to watch the colour. Okay. So when three quarter of the strawberry is, is red yes in this case that's when they are basically ready, ready. to be harvested okay you don't want to pick them before that because once you pick the strawberry it doesn't ripen any further oh and of course you don't want to pick them when it's completely red red because then you're gonna the shelf life is gonna lessen oh. so you go for three quarter and so that will give you a longer shelf life and you still have the taste and the flavor and, and you say you'll notice with strawberries harvested from locations such as these. Yes. And what I think is behind even planting coffee at these elevations. Yes. Is that just a Jamaica, Jamaica coffee is known as the best coffee in the world. Just by virtue of the cloud cover and where it is planted. Okay. The coffee beans tend to ripen at a slow rate. Just yes. like the strawberries. And so it gives it a much better flavor. Okay. So that, that's the only trick. So that strawberry from here will taste much better than one from down in Santa Cruz. Even oh, okay. a pineapple from here will taste. taste right because okay. the fruit ripens at a slower because of the elevation and, and cooler temperature. Okay. It will ripen much slower so, so you get that flavor in your coffee, in your pineapple, whatever you plant at mm. this elevation. So okay. that's an edge going forward as well too. Okay. okay. So it's not like a force ripening it. Okay. Naturally. Right. So you need Naturally. to put the green out here must go to have the best product out. Okay. And the end of this come to come down to shelf life and peace. Okay. All right. All right, Mr. Morris. So thanks again for this little tour on the farm. And um I, I wish you all the best in your business and your endeavors. All right, so thank you and thanks for coming. Yes, sir.